Okay, I am fully aware that the establishment is afraid of Bernie videos are getting a little bit redundant for me at this point, but you've got to understand, I have been challenging these ghouls now for almost five years, and to see them squirm at the prospect of a Bernie Sanders presidency, like, I am, I'm truly enjoying it. And I find it fascinating, like, the tactics in particular that they are trying to use to dissuade people, you know, away from supporting Bernie Sanders. Um, it's honestly bold that they haven't changed anything since 2016. Like, you would have expected them to adapt and their tactics against Bernie Sanders to evolve, but I think that they're starting to realize that nothing they say will dissuade people, especially young people, from, you know, uh, supporting Bernie Sanders. We're going to commit to supporting him because he's the only person who has a really transformative agenda that opts for structural change and he has the movement to facilitate this change in actuality, get what he wants codified into law. So I want to read you one last uh, story on this subject for now from the Associated Press. This is by Steve Peoples and Alexandra Jaffe, who report increasingly alarmed that Bernie Sanders could become their party's presidential nominee. Establishment-minded Democrats are warning primary voters that the self-described Democratic Socialist would struggle to defeat President Donald Trump and hurt the party's chances in premier House, Senate, and governor's races. The urge warnings come as Sanders shows new signs of strength on the ground in the first two states on the presidential primary calendar, Iowa and New Hampshire, backed by a dominant fundraising operation. The Vermont senator has largely escaped close scrutiny over the last year, yeah right, as his rivals doubted the quirky 78-year-old's ability to win the nomination. But less than a month before Iowa's kickoff caucuses, the doubters are being forced to take Sanders seriously. Former Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel, previously a senior aide to President Barack Obama, warned Democrats that Sanders' status as a Democratic Socialist and his unwavering support for Medicare for All won't play well among swing voters in the states that matter most in 2020. You need a candidate with a message that can help us win swing voters in battleground states, Emmanuel said in an interview. The degree of difficulty dramatically increases under a Bernie Sanders candidacy. It just gets a lot harder. Right, so I'm assuming that he believes we need someone more moderate, like Hillary Clinton or Tim Kaine. <laughs> Like, it's honestly amazing to me that they haven't changed their 2016 fear-mongering at all. They're still using the same electability argument against Bernie Sanders, even after their argument is a proven failure. We put up a moderate, and she lost. Why haven't you even tried to change your message even a little bit? Like, I honestly believed that they weren't dumb enough to use the same exact argument against Bernie Sanders. And they are. Like, I, like I'm not under this delusion that Democratic Party strategists are competent. I think they're some of the dumbest people in America, to be honest. But I at least thought they had the self-awareness to not try out the same fear-mongering that we need a centrist to win, but they're doing that again after it was a proven catastrophe and Donald Trump is president. I mean, you really have to be confident in yourself to use the same argument twice. But I mean, it's just astounding that someone like Ron Emanuel, of all people, one, thinks that anyone takes him seriously and cares what he has to say, but two, believes that all of a sudden this time in 2020, we're going to accept his electability argument that we need a moderate to take on Donald Trump. Sure, Jan. I mean, what do you say about this? These people are clueless. No wonder why Democrats under Obama lost more than a thousand seats. They have no strategy. And what I like is he suggests that Bernie Sanders being at the top of the ticket is actually going to hurt down ballot Democrats. No, what we need is high turnout. And part of that, like a really huge portion of the electorate that we need to increase voter turnout so we win, are young people. Riddle me this, genius. Who is the candidate that is running away with the youth vote? It's Bernie Sanders. I believe uh, Bernie Sanders got more votes from young people than Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump combined in 2016. So do you honestly believe that down-ticket Democrats will be worse off with Bernie Sanders at the top of the ticket? Because if he is at the head of the ticket, more people will be inclined to come out and vote. And since they're already voting for Bernie Sanders and excited, odds are they're going to vote 
for, you know, Democrats in the Senate and the House as well. Like, I just, I'm genuinely shocked that they still think this will persuade people. It's not. You guys lost. We tried it your way in 2016, and that was a proven failure. Donald Trump is president. So you're not going to persuade a single person by making the same fucking argument and just changing nothing. I mean, what do you say? What do you say? So I apologize for constantly making videos about how the establishment is afraid of Bernie Sanders, but I truly am enjoying this. It's not a foregone conclusion that he will win the nomination, and yes, we have to work very hard for it, but I am enjoying watching these people, you know, shake at the prospect of a Sanders nomination after all of the things that they put us through, after their incompetence and hubris led to Donald Trump winning. I'm excited to see them fear because, you know, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You're not going to dissuade us from supporting Bernie Sanders. Again, he's the one who has the best shot. Nobody's a foregone conclusion against Donald Trump, but if you honestly believe that a moderate increases our odds, you really are out of touch and more clueless than even I initially thought. Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous, and he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly.